Hey everyone, welcome back. So while I've been sitting around waiting for the last part I need to finish my camera micro jib to arrive, and while I'm waiting for the summer heat to end so I can stand to be outside for 15 minutes at a time, I've been just looking for small things, fun things to do around to make videos of, things like that. Today's example is folding utility knives. Now, don't get down in the comment section below and type in something like, just get the Milwaukee Fastback. You're welcome. End of story. Full stop. Go away now. You know what? I'm not talking about construction knives. Or get down below and type that in. I don't care. It's good for the logarithm, right? But I'm not talking about construction knives here. You know, these are folding utility knives. The kind of thing you might want to carry around in your pocket every day in place of a small folding knife because, like me, you're tired of damaging blades and having to resharpen them and losing something expensive, whatever. So, I've bought a bunch of these over the years. You're only looking at a tiny subset of what I've bought and lost or broken or thrown away because they were garbage. This is just what I could find at hand and some of the newer ones I've got. So, I like these things, obviously, because I have a bunch of them. And I'm probably going to get more, but right now let's look at what I got. Maybe you can tell me down below in the comment section what you have and what you like and what you want to see in these. Or you can tell me they're trash and I'm an idiot or whatever, because God knows there's no, no shortage of people willing to do that. So, let's take a look at them. First one I bought was the old original super knife. Now I've probably had this thing for at least 20 years if not longer and I carried it and I used it a lot. It's got a great clip on it. It's got a ball bearing in there I believe. Great tight fit. Good lock up. Very reliable. It's a liner lock. There's very little not to like about the original super knife except one thing and that is you got to take that stupid little Allen screw out, and I mean all the way out, in order to change the blade. And every other time I take that out, I drop it and lose it. Now, I have in the past, I have thought it would be a good idea to replace that with a little thumb screw. Probably have to clearance the handle, you know, to then get it to close. But others just came along and I never got around to do it plus you'd still have to take it out and I could drop a little thumb screw as easy as I drop that so as much as I like this I kind of just relegated this to a toolbox drawer and I don't carry it anymore for that reason I don't really know what came along next I think I had a, one of those little Gerber E-abs for a while but it's got the same problem with the stupid little screw that has to come out and then I ran across one of these at Lowe's. And these actually come in a two-pack. And I think I have another two-pack that I never opened. Yeah, right here in my big bottom drawer that I never opened. I ran across these on sale at Lowe's one day, you know, five, six, seven, eight years ago, whatever, for five bucks for two. So I bought a couple of the two-packs. And obviously, I've used them quite a bit, and I like them. They have a nice, good lockup with the blade out. They're small. They're light. They got a good belt clip, which is mandatory for me if you're going to carry it every day. They have a completely useless screwdriver on the front, which I have used as a scratch-all a couple times. And they got a couple of little wrenches back there for like oxygen bottles or things like that. These aren't that bad. They have a push-button blade release. I know you probably can't see it on, on, on it because it's black, but they have a push-button blade release. You push it and the blade comes out. Now, the bad thing about them is the blade is never really very tight. It wobbles around a lot. But you know what? They work pretty good for what they are. And um, I got a couple tossed in different places around. And um, yeah, they're not really bad for the price. Don't have any real complaints with them other than what I've outlined. I also picked up another cobalt tool. And this is a folding one rather than retractable. And this one... The first thing you notice about this one is it's heavier than most. It's fatter this way than most. Still got a good belt clip, good deep belt clip on it. Now these, these early ones like I'm showing you here, you can't reverse the belt clip. It's only on one way. So you guys who got to have your belt clip a certain way and it's not this way, you might not like it. But um, this one, the first thing you notice is it is rough opening it up. 
And um, I have worked on one of these. I don't know if it's this one. I bought a couple of these, gave one to my wife. I worked on a cup, one of these to try and smooth it up in there, and I got it some better, but it's it's still rough. Do you care about on a knife like this? I don't know. This one also has a push button blade release, and because of that, the blade is loose and wobbles around. But you push it there and the blade comes out and it holds the blade pretty securely. I have not had the blade on either one of these come out during heavy use. So there is that and um, I don't know, it's not a bad little knife. They're not very expensive. I think they were seven or eight bucks. Um, nice aluminum construction. These all have nice aluminum construction with screws holding it together. So nothing wrong with it there. Just it's just a little bit bulkier than what I wanted just to stick, you know, in the back of a, you know, put the clip on and slide it to the rear of a pocket. Anyway, not bad for the price, but nothing spectacular either. Gets the job done. Then I saw one of these on, I forget where it was. It was one of the YouTuber I watched had the original one of these. I think it was called the Tyrant TI for titanium and it looked really cool and one day when I was on AliExpress probably buying 3D printer parts I found a Chinese knockoff of it and that's this here and this is a really neat little knife it's a frame lock locks up very securely um, it's super light it's very thin and small it has a good belt clip on it it was exactly what I was looking for it even has a lanyard loop back here for those of you who are into that kind of thing my issue for this one was it's also got a push button blade release right here you just kind of if the camera will focus it just has a you just press that over and the blade slides out my problem with it is it does not hold the blade securely it's not that the blade isn't really loose or wobbly and you can, you know, cut like like that, and the blade will stay in. But as soon as you start using it in any kind of rough fashion and wiggle the blade, it will it will give the blade up, and then the blade stays stuck in what you're cutting. So for very very light duty use, you know, opening boxes, cutting cord, things like that, it was fine. But as soon as you started to get a little rough with it, the blade would just keep coming out. Now I found some blades were better than others. And I thought there would be some way I could probably thread one side of this and put a thumb stud in it, like you see in some others. But, um, you know, that would kind of goof up the, um, the fold. There would be, you'd have to clearance it here for that. And, eh, I don't know. So others came along, and I kind of lost interest in this one, although I did carry it around for a while with me because it does good for opening packages and boxes and things like that. Then somebody gave me this as a gift. This is the Gerber Prybrid. And as you can see, this really hasn't been carried around or used very much, mainly because it has no um, belt clip on it. Now, somebody told me that newer versions do come with a belt clip, and I could add one to this without that much difficulty. But um, it's kind of big and bulky. I mean, look at it in comparison to this. It is big. It is bulky. It's not really thick. But um, it's got this pry thing on the end, which is kind of nice. I've never used it, but it is kind of nice. has a cord cutter in here, which is only going to work if you happen to have a very nice sharp blade in it. Um, a decent amount of the blade is extended. If I hadn't mentioned it, one of the things I don't like about some of these others is the blade. You really don't get much of the blade extended you know, out past the holder. The original Super Knife wasn't too bad, but some of these others really just don't see much of the blade. Um, and the problem with that was, while it works fine for a package opener or a box cutter or things like that, you really can't saw much with it because there's not much of the blade exposed. Now, that means you get a blade change. You're only using half the blade, so when you break the tip or dull it, you flip it around and you have a whole nother use. But still, it to me, it could never replace a pocket knife because there just isn't enough of the blade exposed for that reason. Now, this one was better. This one had quite a bit of blade exposure. And you could get a decent amount of I actually found that I didn't really ever need to use a pocket knife on a multi-tool or a regular pocket knife because I did have a fair amount of blade exposed with that one. Um, 
So the pry bread, mainly because of the lack of the lack of um, a belt clip, kind of got relegated to a desk tool, toolbox tool type of thing. And I had a couple others in the meantime. I forget what they were. They were cheap and they didn't really work very well or I lost them. Then came along these two. I got this one first. This is the Oticle by Olight. And it's got this really cool flag pattern on the G10 handles. Um, it's got a crossbar lock, an axis style lock. It's got a good belt clip, but it is not really very deep. So if you're somebody who likes a really long, deep belt clip like it's on, you know, the original super knife or like it's on this, um, this cobalt knife, you're probably not really going to like this one because it really only is about, I don't know, maybe inch and a quarter in depth, something along those lines. They make this in a black pattern and a carbon fiber. These are G10 scales, if I didn't mention. The nice thing about this one is a large amount of the blade is exposed so you can use it like a real pocket knife. And if the camera will focus once again for me, maybe I'm just too close there, um, you will see that it is quite usable. It looks like the camera has decided it will not focus, but um, see if I can coax it into focusing. There we go. Um, you'll see it does have a lot of the blade exposed. It also has a thumb stud. Well, not a thumb stud. <laughs> let, me, let me say that again. It has a thumb stud for opening, but it also has a knurled little nut there knurled screw to release the blade and one thing I like about it is that doesn't have to be removed to release the blade. Blade comes out while this is still in. So that means that you don't have to take this out and Chuck doesn't fumble finger it and lose it. Now it also holds the blade very securely if you tighten it a decent amount which I didn't do which I did there. The blade is very secure it's not coming out of there. And if you're like me and you carry, you know, like one of these around too, you can also always put a little extra tension on that. This knife is extremely easy to open and close. Um, I mean, extremely easy. And even a fumble-fingered fool like me can do it without injuring themselves. So there's that to think of. This has become my favorite knife. It's very light. It's very easy to carry. It's quick. It's easy to open. And um, it holds the blade securely no matter what, and you have that full length of the blade. I like, I like this one a lot, and it's not expensive. I think I got this on sale for like 17, 18 bucks recently, and I've been using it for the past couple of weeks, and I have to admit, it's pretty darn good. I really have not found one thing I don't like about it. Fit and finish is extremely tight. I haven't had to tighten or loosen anything to get it to be extremely smooth. So that's a real winner in my book. Then this one came along. As I was digging for parts on AliExpress for my uh, micro jib build, I came across this. And I didn't buy it at first because I thought it was overpriced and still do think it's overpriced. I think it was about 37 bucks when I first saw it. But um, I left it sitting in my cart, and then a sale came along, and then the seller came back and gave me a coupon. And I think I wound up getting it only for a couple of bucks more than I spent for the, um, the Oticle. This one is really unique in its design, and I like unique, ingenious designs. I really, that, that's attractive to me. I also like simplicity of something like this, but you know what? This kind of thing is attractive to me as well. It's got a nice belt clip on it, very tight, holds in very well. In fact, it may hold better than this one, but it works. Both are very well on the belt clip side. You cannot, again, reverse the belt clip on this one. I think you can on this one. No, you can't because the um, axis lock button is going to be in the way. But this one, you open this one by separating the handles. Let me see if I can hold it right and do it. Um, hello, come on. There we go. You got you to gotta do it just right or it doesn't work. And I mean, that can be a bad thing, but it can be a good thing because it probably won't open that easy in your pocket. Anyway, it's held together. The halves are held together with magnets. Let me get it up closer so you can see it. Let me make sure the camera's going to focus for me there. You press it like that. It has two 
fairly powerful neodymium magnets and then it does one of these. And now it is open and the magnets again lock it tight. Now how tight this blade locks depends on you holding the halves. As long as you hold the halves it's not going anywhere because it's solidly mounted to one of the halves. Um, if you let it slip in your hand, yeah, it might do one of those, but if you're holding both halves, it's not going to go. And it's got a very, it was a little loose when I got it, and I had to tighten it. There is a bearing in there, holds it pretty good. Um, no real issues with that. Got a lot of blade exposed, not quite as much blade as exposed as on the, as on the um, Oticle probably half inch less, but nonetheless it still has a good amount of blade exposed and I think it can still be used more as a pocket knife than just as a package opener. It also, you may have noticed when I open it, it holds a spare blade in the handle and that blade is also held in by magnets. Having a spare blade in one of these to me, that's that's super handy because it keeps you from having to keep a spare blade in something else in case you, you break it or the blade comes out and you lose it or something along those lines. Unfortunately, this one also has a push button lockup just like this one. It has a push button lockup which has a little nub. You can't see it in this one unless you take the blade out. But there's a little nub that just pushes into one of these cutouts in the blade and that's all that holds it. This one holds it quite a bit better than this one, but I have found that if you wiggle it around much from side to side, you can still get the blade to come out. Now, I haven't carried this one enough to know if it's going to do that as easy as that other one does, but um, it holds it pretty tight as long as you pull back and forth, but as soon as you put much wobble on it from side to side, you will pull the blade out, and that's kind of why I retired this one because this one's even easier to come out. It's fine as long as you do this, but as soon as you put any wobble side to side on it, the blade is going to come out. Like say you're going to open packages with it, things like that, but as soon as you start using it for something like cutting thick foam or cutting cardboard boxes up or anything like that, you're going to start losing the blade out of it all the time, which is just really annoying. That does not happen on the Oticle because you can just tighten that little thumb, thumb stud down a little bit more and it holds it. Will that happen on this one as well? I don't know. I haven't used it long enough to really tell. My first tests are that it holds the blade much better than this one. This one also came with a blade in the handle. It didn't have a blade in place, but there was a blade in the handle and it came with a package of 10 blades and came in this nice little zippered pouch thingy, which I'll probably lose or throw away. Um, but anyway, I'm really impressed with the design of it. I like it a lot. I am going to carry it for a while and I am going to use it to see how well it holds the blades. And I have found, like I did with this one, that some blades hold better than others. And I actually had some that wouldn't fit in and lock in at all. You'd think by now the size of that cut would be standardized, but you know what, everybody, everybody's machines are, some machines are new, some are worn out. Some are made by one manufacturer, some are made by another, but this is a really smooth, slick little tool, and I am going to be using it a lot, but this, the Oticle, is still my go-to. I'll put links to all of these that I can find below. I'm not even sure Lowe's makes this Cobalt one anymore. Super Knife, I'm pretty sure you can still buy. I don't know if they've changed the design any, or if they even think they need to. Anyway, I'll put as many links as I can find below. They'll probably be affiliate links. You know how it goes. I paid for all of these with my own money. None were sent to me for free for the purpose of this review. So um, yeah, let me know down below if you guys like this type of folding utility knife or retractable utility knife and which ones you use. And hey, if you think I'm an idiot for not just using a Milwaukee Fastback, you can post that down there as well. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. I'm going to go back to staying out of the heat. It is 11 in the morning and it's already 102 degrees out, so yeah, I'm, I'm not going outside. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye for now.